<laughs> but, but, but this guy can. So he knows what are, what's supposed to be done. Okay, uh, so here's the, uh, the guy in charge. Yeah, yeah. No, I'm, I'm, I'm just a guy sailing the boat. You're, yeah. you're going to decide where you want to go and what yeah. you want to do. And we're Welcome to Copenhagen Suborbitals Marine. This is a little video about what we actually do to try training and testing our ships uh, before we go on a launch mission. The rip boat you see there belongs to Fleming Rasmussen, who is going to be the uh, captain of this trip. He is going to help steer Vostok because he has a lot of experience sailing. The whole idea of this is to get ready and know, make sure that everyone knows what needs to be done uh, when we're on the mission in, in the Baltic Sea. So uh, Fleming will give a short description about what we're going to do on this trip. We are out here on a, a nice evening sail. Uh, actually, the whole fleet of uh, CS is, uh, is out to, to do some exercise. Picking up on our skills at sea, we are here on Vostok, uh, taking out for, for a spin. And uh, we are going to do some maneuvers, uh, test some uh, rescue things. And uh, at the same time, we have, as a follow-up, we have Blue Rip out somewhere there. And uh, while we're doing this, uh, another crew is actually at Bornholm sailing uh, Sputnik back to uh, get the rocket installed and do the uh, final test before the launch. Well, I will talk a little bit over the scenic pictures here. Uh, this is a beautiful shot of, uh, of the old ship Vostok. It is actually Günther K. K. Küchenmacher, which was the German name it had when it was a rescue boat in the private German rescue service. She's from 1969. She is built all in aluminum. She has a 900 horsepower V8 engine and is actually more or less designed to the role we do. Um, we have built her, or rebuilt her, to be a mission control ship for all our missions. It is a tremendous of importance for us that we actually have a ship that is our own so we can have all the equipment. As you can see she has a lot of antennas. Uh, some of it is just communication, some of it is for the live streaming from the Baltic Sea and to fit this to a borrowed or a rented ship every time would be a nightmare. So this possibility to have this old girl is actually what is really helping us a lot. As you can see here she is a little bit special because she has a cradle in the back. That's actually in the old days, there was uh, a daughter boat there that was used for rescue work. But for us, it's very good because we can actually lower the back end of the ship and take on uh, our rockets or our capsule when it comes to that. And for that, she is um, more or less purpose-built for rockets, which I'm very, very sure was not the intention when she was built in 1969. The trip today uh, was about actually testing the crew and the ship. The ship has been lying still most of the winter. We had some problems during the winter with her engines and with her electronics and the electrics at all. And uh, we are out taking a test spin. And while we do that, we train the, uh, the whole crew. This is a standard exercise you do when you're taking your marine credentials. And it actually can be both used as a rocket pickup and it can be used just as a training for taking someone up at the water, which is falling in, which is a risk. Well, rescue ships need to be rescued sometime. Of course, uh, one of the repairs we did uh, didn't really work the way that was intended. We had a cooling problem on the main gearbox. Uh, we shut down the engine to cool it down and then we couldn't start it again. It's a little bit embarrassing, but we actually had to, to call a Danish rescue service, uh, which is also a volunteer organization. And um, we're a member of, them, um, of the Danish uh, Sea Rescue Society and they came out and gave us a hand. Um, it is a little bit ridiculous being pulled by, by a rip boat because Vostok raised 38 tons, so the trip was, was quite long. But everything went well, it was a beautiful weather, nothing was really in danger of, of, of happening. We also had the help of uh, one of our members' boats, Antares. She's also going to Bornholm, uh, she's a very nice motorboat, and uh, she helped take over 
the uh, the pulling into the harbor because we when you are actually trying to get a ship that is uh, without engine to uh, into the cay tide you need preferably two boats you have one pulling and then you have one that actually acts as a brake this is the uh, the best way of, of getting her to be in her position and you can actually control her quite easily with these two boats so it ended up being a rescue mission, uh, rescuing the rescue ship, but it still trained the, the, the crew. Uh, we, we got out a lot out of this. It, it was then we found out that it was a very boring little electrical mistake, but it's always that kills the, the whole project. And uh, here we, we actually see them coming into to the port, and we're trying to maneuver as best as you can, as you can imagine uh, putting a 38-ton ship straight into a little slot between two other ships is a bit difficult. But we had the help of uh, Martin, who was on Antares, and he was uh, put ashore first, and he handled the, the, the first line throw, and uh, we got her in safely. Um, these guys from the Danish Sea Rescue Service were the kindest people in the whole world, and uh, as, because they're volunteers pretty much like we are, we of course invited them on board. They knew about us and we knew about them, so we had a good talk and um, made sure that we also a member of the, of the Rescue Society because sometimes you really do need it, and they are ready to go 24-7. So they came aboard, uh, had a good chat, and uh, decided that uh, if we ever going to need some able seamen, we can always call them. So um, it's, it's cool that we have this network of, uh, of other mariners in and around Copenhagen. When we're finished, we, we try to always end it with, uh, with a briefing, debriefing, just talking about what happened. And we do that even if, if the mission and the, the, sh the sail had, had been okay, because it's important to actually be able to criticize each other and coming with good points, bad points, and just make sure that everyone has, has had the same experience. But for that, I should hilse from Sputnik Crew. They are on the way. They are going to the next one. F-15. And they will take it away. Well, Sputnik, at the same time, was actually leaving one home with her crew of four guys and coming to Copenhagen so we can fit the rockets. Oh, hello. This is uh, early June 2016 and we are making ready for this year's rocket launch season. We are in uh, Nexu, in the harbour, and in a few moments uh, Sputnik will depart from Nexu Harbour and sail to Copenhagen. As many of you know, Sputnik is our uh, rocket vessel. It's the one we actually do all the firing from. She has been lying in Nexu for, for the winter. The plan was to get her on land, but it's a little bit difficult because she's such a special design. It's actually impossible to use one of the, the normal harbor um, lifts they have over there to get her up because she's so wide. She's 12 meters wide and they don't have a crane where you can actually lift her. Sputnik is very slow sailing and that makes it a bit difficult when you have to cross the shipping lanes with a lot of traffic. The, uh, the Gat at Bonholm is actually one of the worst places in the northern part of Europe. It's uh, just as trafficked as the English Channel is. We have very big ships coming with high speed through this area. So you cross it directly in 90 degrees and you keep out a good watch. We have uh, some good guys on the boat, they have all been sailing before, so even though she's only steaming out at four, four and a half knots, she made the, the crossing with no problem, and as you can see, there's also time to just relax and chill down on this trip. She arrived at 5.30 in the morning, and um, we, a couple of guys, greeted them and made sure that they could uh, actually get the ship into shore and uh, help them empty the boat. And lo and behold, she's sailing again. We uh, fixed our electrical problem. Uh, we have upgraded with an uh, extra set of new batteries and made sure that the chargers are actually doing what they're supposed to do. So she's sailing and uh, now we are getting ready for the next set of tests and that means that we need the two boats to be at the same place. So uh, she's coming into uh, the part of Copenhagen Harbor right next to, uh, to where Sputnik is and we will use the next period of uh, about three weeks to run a series of tests where we have the rocket on Sputnik and we try controlling everything from Vostok of the mission control ship. Well, Vostok being moored here uh, next to Sputnik is really the greatest thing to see because this really sets off the launch season. We are going for a launch on the 16th of July and having these two ships together is just the kickstart of the whole campaign because right now we can actually start doing what we do best and that is to launch rockets from the sea. Not, not.